Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're checking out a piece of awesome free 3D software for creating terrain. And this one has been recommended to me quite a bit over the last, say, month and a half. Only problem is in that last month and a half, there was also a little thing called Christmas, then I got the flu, and all that stuff, so I never really kind of got that around to covering it, which is a shame, because it is actually a genuinely pretty awesome piece of software. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to check it out today. If you want to grab it yourself, it is available at demonsandmedia.com. I will toss the link in the linked article down below. This started life as an Unreal Engine map tool and is now available completely free. This guy is 100% patron supported. If you support them on Patreon, you get sample projects, early access, that kind of stuff. But if you just want to download it, you can do so. Downloads are available here. It is updated quite frequently. And you will see the um, three options available. These two are Google uh, Drive so you're going to get some kind of errors and warnings. Don't worry about it. It's a zip file. You extract it out. Once you've got it, it is available like so. Just extract it out and run this executable right here. And when you do, welcome to Terra Sculptor. I'm going to call it Terra Sculptor, but it's Terra Sculptor technically. Um, and here is your launch screen. Now you can fire things off. You can do it. You can import and you can import from a lot of stuff. We'll see that in just a few minutes. But we're going to start off with a new project from scratch. So create a new project like so. It's very straightforward. You pick the size of your train. So 512 by 512, 1024, 4K, so on. We'll just go with 1024. Now, one of the things I noticed is their default grid is exceedingly small. I don't really know why that is, but if you want to change it, just basically you can change out the home grid right here. Uh, change that out to, I think 256 will match the default size. Or your other option is you can go into scene and go to objects and just turn the grid off completely. I I'm fine with either approach. It doesn't add much to the equation. And here is your terrain. Not much to look at so far. Now, there are a couple ways you can go about creating your terrain. The first one is using simple generators. So we can fill shapes out that kind of make up our height map or you could do uh, linear gradients and so on so if I want to do a random circle on the map I could do so let's just randomize the settings and there you see a circle is generated on our train now almost nobody is going to use something like this which by the way you just noticed there is an undo option here what you're instead probably going to do is start with a noise map some kind of a um a noise uh, algorithm such as Verani or Perlin. I'm going to use Perlin in this particular case. And the nice thing you can see here is, um, and probably nine times out of ten, you're going to probably use Perlin as well. And you'll notice here you get a preview of the work you're going to get. You've got a number of different options available. Uh, so you've got defaults you can work with. So if you want fuzzy, you can create fuzzy. You want lakes, you've got lakes. Or we come down here, we've got a whole lot of control over it. So we can change this, the, the density or the size of our train. So we move between continent and boulders and so on. Let's move that slightly back past continent. I like it, that layer right there. Uh, we can change details in it, like the roughness, like so. Uh, the level of detail, like so. Uh, layout, and you see the results changing on the fly as you're changing it. Go down here, you can also change out warping. So if you want, uh, you can change the amount of gain, and you can see the results on the underlying algorithm. And then once you've got something you are liking or you're good with, you just go ahead and click OK. And then boom, you just create a train. Now you notice I'm using a scroll wheel to uh, zoom out. We've got control over here, so we can switch to pan mode. Um, and then it's not going to do anything. Let me figure that out for a second. Uh, we can zoom in and out mode or dolly mode. And then we've got an orbit mode available right here. Or you could basically just leave it on this guy right there and have access to pretty much everything you want. But what you're going to probably want to do almost immediately is get back to that textured look we had going on. I, you liked that better, I'm guessing. And so did I. So what we're going to do to switch that guy back on is go here to materials over here. And you switch out the material types. So right now it's set to a grayscale. Now if you actually have a texture to go with your train or you're importing train that's already created, you can actually bring in the texture map as you want. But what you're going to probably do on generated train most of the time is use a color set. So let's select color set. And then you'll notice here we've got a number of different options. Now it previewed using the, the earth option. And you're going to notice the earth option is pretty solid. Uh, it's based off the height, the peaks. So you get snow as you go up. You got water as you go down. Um, we can switch things out here if we wish. So if we want to do more of a woodlands, we can switch it to a woodlands look. Uh, if we had to have more of an arctic look, we can do so on. Uh, but most of the time you're going to probably want earth like what we've got here. And right now, you could be done. You could quite literally go ahead and just file, uh, export this guy out, you export your terrain, and when it comes to exporting, oh my goodness, you have so many options. So you can export as a 3DS mash, uh, an ASCII delimited file, uh, an ASE, or that uh, that's a text-based version or format from the old uh, 3D Studios days, um, Unreal height map formats, various different color formats, various different uh, image formats. So if you want to export it 
to a game engine or an artist tool or an engineering tool, almost guarantee there is going to be some kind of support there. So you can get this guy working, the, the results of it, this height map that it's generating, the colors and textures and so on generated, working in whatever environment you want. So once you've got this guy working, you can do a couple more things. So while we're here, we could go ahead and create um, a background if we so wish. So we come up here, we've got ambient lighting options. So we can change out the, the light that's coming in. We can also have a direction. We can change out the directional lights and how they're implemented, what angle and direction they're coming in from. We can also change their color if we so wish. Colored lights are almost always a little weird. So I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, on top of that, we've also got control over the environment itself, got control over the camera. We can pan it around manually, handle it right there. Uh, but what you probably want to do is go to backdrop. So you want to come into uh, here into objects and make sure that it's enabled. So if you want to show the backdrop, turn the backdrop on and see we've got now this glaring uh, sky box going on here. We go back here now to the backdrop settings and we can change it out. So right now it's set to a single color. So if we want, we can switch out from the defaults. We can have various different colors going on. Or we can come here and switch this instead to single color to have it um, a gradient color if we so wish. So get more of a sky box going on. I'm probably going to leave it with that for now. But you can also bring in a texture cube and provide textures for each of the angles or backgrounds. Or you can bring in sky domes or sky planes. Textured sky, so basically a already warped um, background sky box if you have one. They're available. There's thousands of them online if you want to go ahead and grab your own, but you can bring them in that way. But for now, I'll just stick with the gradient texture. There you see. So if you want to uh, change out the colors as you go, so you want to have the lower be a little bit lighter, uh, you can do so. We can have a little bit foggier at the top. We can make it a little bit darker or we can just make it like just dreary. Um, so you do have control over the gradient that's being used. We can switch that guy out. Let's go with brown. There, we got an ugly, ugly sky going on. But you've got control over the sky like you saw. You've also got control over the level of fogging that's going on here. So you can change up the fog color. You can turn it off and on. You can you know, have it enabled or not. I tend to not use fog that much, uh, especially working like this, where I'm going to ultimately be exporting it out to a game engine. But those are your display options. As you saw, nothing here has been difficult at all. Now you can go back to the top here. We've got a ton of different options. We saw the generators. We can use that for creating uh, geographic shapes that are going to work with our height map. We got the various different um, noise maps that we could use. This is where we created our original pearl and noise to create our map. Switching any of these things are actually going to overwrite all of your work you've done so far, so you're going to want to be careful about that. You basically start here is more or less how it goes. Uh, we've got weight mapping that we can work in, so if you want to switch out, for example, the altitude on this map, uh, we can do so. I don't know why there's no preview working on there. So we can change the low and the high, the amount of fall off, and then done. Uh, that will change out the weight map that goes on. Oops, I don't know what I clicked there. I clicked something I shouldn't have. But anyways, um, we get into uh, you adjustments for moving things around. And we get into the modif... Oh, that's where we were... No, here we go. So we want to do modify. Oh, yeah. So I was, so, oh, I was changing weight maps, not instead of adjust. Sorry, my apologies. So here you are in the adjustments. You can go ahead and you can change out the way the height works. So if you want to have more lows, you can easily make more lows. You want to make higher peaks, you can do that here as well. And then when you're done and good to go, you're out there. So you got all your various different modifiers you can work with things for add, add, eh. altitude. We want to get a little of some of this harshness. We could apply a blur if we so wish. And once again, you get a nice little preview right here. So we can pick the radius of our blur, how strong it is. So that's a little too strong perhaps. So let's actually, let's drag a radius down a bit. So you see there, and it'll just take some of the, the sharpness off of our world. And there is your results. So the other cool thing that we could do once we get past um, these guys, and here you can get into transformation where you're going to move things around. So if we wanted to do, uh, for example, compress our peaks down, we can run the peak compressor. And there you see our peaks are coming down. So you got all kinds of fine tuning controls over your generated height map, which is very, very cool. And then we can even come in here and go down here and do just full on erosion. So if you wanted to have um, rain over time kind of come in here and erode the scene, we can do so. Here you determine the amount of rain. By the way, when you're changing this guy out, it will make a profound effect on performance. So be careful how much you change that. But you see you got a ton of control over the, the erosion factor of rain. Go ahead, click OK. It's going to apply rain over a period of time and then we are going to get a uh, rain effect on our terrain which is pretty cool it's pretty straightforward and how it works and you can get a result that you want pretty easy now another really cool in the transform tools if you're going for that minecrafty look you can actually come up here and do a pixelate on it uh, you can change the size of said pixels so let's say 64 Four by 64 and now we have a very blocky map and I could obviously go back down we could do that to a much lesser degree so let's come back in here and we'll pixelate it again but instead of 64 by 64 we'll go back to 16 by 16 
and then boom, so you got a cool pixelated look going on. So there's a lot of power in this tool. Now, one thing that you may really want to do also, and I told you very early on that we might come back to the import section of things. Well, it's time for that now. You've got a ton of import options. So if you want to create your map, uh, you could actually have imported it and you've got, again, quite a few different formats you can bring and a lot of them are image files. Uh, height maps normally are, are pretty straightforward in the way that they are structured. You can bring in various different image formats, but you can also bring in uh, height data. So if we can head back over to the web browser here, you can see we've got the USGS Earth Explorer. You gotta sign up for an account for this, but this basically gives you height maps for the entirety of, uh, I'm actually not sure the degree what they cover, but let's head on over. Nevada normally has some pretty interesting terrain. So let's go find a chunk of terrain that we look the, look the eh find interesting here in Nevada. All right, I want something some resolution to it though. Let's go here. Let's go to this mountain range over here. All right. So if you got an area of, of terrain that you actually find interesting, you come in here and you can actually just kind of mark a segment of it like so. Okay, why do I have an extra? All right, so let's get rid of that first one. All right, so there we have a nice little terrain uh, result we could come out here. Uh, we can go over to, I think that's all I need to do, yeah. So go to data sets. And then what we wanna do is bring it in a format that'll work for us in this particular case. And this gets a little overwhelming, but what we wanna do is get digital elevation data and we wanna bring out SRTM. So bring this guy out here and we wanna bring out void fill. So we got our options select, we'll go to the results, and this will generate our data set for us. You've got an option of ARC1 and ARC3. What you want is an ARC1, and just go ahead and download that data. All right, so we wanna do, and this uh, one ARC second versus three ARC second determines the, the size of the scan that's going on. So I wanna do Bill, I believe. Uh, GeoTIFF would work as well, as far as I understand, but we'll bring down Bill right now. It should be in, uh, there. All right, so that is extracted. Let's grab that data. We mostly want that bill file, but you see we got a couple of other data files to go with it. So we'll extract that out to my downloads folder and then we'll come back over here. So let's go ahead and do a file. We'll import and that is downloads. And I wanna do a bill file, bill. There it is. So we'll import that guy in. Uh, we're fine with the default data. I don't really understand most of this this stuff anyway, so I'm not playing around with it. But here we go. We just drew in the uh, raw data files from the map. So here we go. We have this data that we just suckered in from over there. It is now available, real world data for us to work with. Now you're gonna notice we are looking a little bit lush. Now once again, that is because I went with the default material of Earth. So if we wanted to move this to more of a desert look, I uh, go ahead to go to Canyon uh, Desert. So there you go. And you've just basically re recreated terrain from a real world environment in just a few seconds. Really cool stuff. Uh, by the way, Earth Explorer is a pretty awesome resource as well. It's a free sign up if, if you're interested. It's a pain in the ass to sign up for. Uh, but once you got, there's a huge amount of uh, data files out there. It just, and mostly obviously for scientists, not for game developers. But if you want to recreate real world environments, uh, you can do so. And then you can easily bring them into Terra Sculptor and make some really cool results in a very, very short period of time. So that's it. That is Terra Sculptor. Like I said, the closest thing I can really think of out there is something like World Machine. You can create uh, height maps in this thing in like a staggeringly easy amount of time. Like in about two or three minutes, you can create some pretty cool uh, results and have them exported and working. And if your game engine of choice is Unreal Engine, all the better because this thing was a tool that was designed for them. But ultimately, a lot of times the output from this is just a height map uh, or a height map and texture map. And in that particular case, it can work in whatever tool you want or in fact you can export this guy out as like an obj file which will be gigantic uh, but that would actually be like a polygonal mesh of everything we see here so if you wanted to bring it in really high resolution into something like uh, blender max or maya you can do so uh, so that is it that is terra sculptor a really cool free map creation software let me know what you thought comments down below and i'll talk to you all later goodbye